In this video series, I'm going to be putting D5 render and Corona render head to head. I'm not doing that in terms of the software capabilities, though we might be seeing that also, but just to buttress some of the recurring points that is needed to master to have a very good realistic render. So this is my friend's render at Simple at Difficult. You can check up the tutorial where he did the training for exterior rendering using Corona and 3ds max and then over to the right is the same model i rendered in d5 render and um, i tried to recreate everything he did and um, this is the result and here is his model and uh, this is the render in, 3D, in d5 render so we are going to be looking at the key steps necessary for creating good photorealistic exterior render over and over again so that it's not a mistake but something that is consciously done so thanks welcome to the video let's go i was able to get this model from my friend at simple or difficult you can check out this tutorial in full at his channel i'll leave a link in the description so let's begin the first thing we want to do is to export or sync to d5 if you are working in 3d max you really may not need to export. The best thing I advise is to sync. If you have two screens, it makes it easier. So you, you should have installed the D5 converter by now. So select it and click start or stop D5. This will uh, immediately start D5 up for you and then import the project there. So once we are in D5, once the project loads in D5, I'm going to produce this rendering using uh, the basic steps of creating realistic rendering. So the first thing we want to do is composition. Set up our camera to look like what we're expecting it to be at the end of the day. So this is our target. This is what we are hoping to get. And um, the camera I have is already almost close to that, but I can go ahead to set it up. So the first thing you want to do um, is to create your camera. You can do that by just clicking create scene. But um, before then, we can set it up. So this is a two-point perspective camera. If you press the F8 button on the screen, it's going to keep your view in two-point perspective. After that, under here, you go to camera setting. Here you can set some basic things like the focal length of the camera and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave this at, um, let's say, 28 it's almost close to what we have already in the view which is okay and then if you come here there are two ways to navigate to the camera one is orbit the other one is fly when it's on fly you can use the keyboards like the w s d um, a q e to arrange the view and you can also click the center button and drag left or right to pan the view you can also scroll in and out to set up the view and um, this is basically it when while it's in orbit the you can do much more than that like orbit suggests you can orbit around the point you can click and uh, right click and then uh, also orbit around the point i'll click create new scene by just clicking here and the new scene is created if i want to create more scenes i have to click this other icon or uh, alternate s to add a new scene as a shortcut so i feel i've created a view almost looking like what it's on 3d max so this is close to what we would require and um, once we have this you can update your scene by bringing your mouse here and clicking this refresh button it updates the scene and also to finalize your composition um, you can click on this image button and set your image size which is very good to do early on while you're working so um, we can play around with the sizes until you've gotten something close to what you want so also while setting up your camera you see this option here to zoom in or zoom out or change the focal length is still present even while setting up your camera so um, we have this option present in d5 if you feel like you have made a mistake while choosing the camera you can do that, um, adjust the focal length again at this point and then still achieve what you had in mind to achieve for your camera. So this is okay. I had to change this focal length to 25, adjust some of this height. Once I get a good combination, you can uncheck this so that whenever you adjust this, um, you still get the same 
um, size of image. So this is okay. I can um, refresh my render, my scene here. Whenever you adjust your scene to save it, you need to refresh. If you forget to refresh, um, it's going to affect you negatively. So the first part of composition is to set up your camera. And the second part of the composition is to populate your scene in such a way that the elements within your scene look realistic and then they look very rich and interesting. So it's always good to do this at the beginning of the work. First to start, I would like to um, convert my display view to play mode. You see, I've not done anything on lighting yet. So whatever lighting you are seeing in this view, uh, whatever feel you are getting is basically uh, all from the default view in D5 render. So if we go back to our reference image uh, very quickly, we can see that we have a lot of three vegetations at the back and some here and some hedges and, um, you know, so we'll start from the back, populate the scene. We'll put some vegetation here and then, um, you know, put some of this element here. This is very important to do early on in the scene because it's going to mean that you understand the view you are trying to create. And also with regards to composition, I would like to mention here that if you have a reference image, it makes things way more easier. Even if I wasn't doing exactly this building, if uh, if I was using this as my reference image, it's going to speed up my work. You can toggle off the camera view by just clicking this and um, hitting the M button. The M button is going to lead you into the D5 library, which is one of the best libraries I've come across. Although it loads from the internet, but once you download a library component, it is downloaded in your system. So uh, what I want to do is to first put in those background trees and the rest. So if you click to nature here, I want to start with low poly trees because these trees are far from the camera. So I can click on it. Uh, it's taking a second to load because like I said, it's from online. But if you look at some of all these trees, I've used them before like this tree. So they are already loaded and I don't need to load them again. So once I click on it, it's active. And um, even if I close this, you can see the tree in the view. So another good thing about D5 render is that you can work in 2D and 3D. For this, I want to work in 2D. I'm just going to tap the T on my screen and it's going to be uh, in 2D. And this is the area I want to place my trees. There are various ways to place this, but now I'm just going to click to place. Now, when I click to place, um, you see it's it comes with an icon there. If I tap Escape, um, then the tree I just placed will be highlighted with the cursor. If I tap the V button, it's it uh, flickers between movement and scale. With this, you can easily move or scale a tree you just added at the background. That's one good thing about it. Maybe I want to add this tree again. All I need to do is to type Ctrl D with this selected and a new tree pops out. If I type the M key and I want to use another type of tree, let me say this one. I can click to select and um, you see this tree is slightly smaller. Um, once I place it, I can escape, use the V button uh, to scale it. Maybe if I wanted it bigger or something like that. If I wanted it smaller, fine. If I use the Ctrl D button, it gives me exactly the same size of this image. If I tap the M key to select it again, it gives me the original size uh, of the image. It's very versatile. I'm working on plans. So once I go back to my view, now there's something I didn't save. I didn't update my view when I converted it to clay mode. So that's why. So for now, I'm just going to update the view since I don't want the pictures. So you can see I'm, I'm compositing. So that's my major aim here.
So the final thing in this composition will be to add the car at this point. So luckily for me, I, I have this exact car. So I'll just go ahead and place it. So this is how composition works. And it's, it's a very important tool in creating photorealistic render. So thanks for watching. In the next step, we'll look at how to set up our sun and sky and uh, cast shadows in such a way as to replicate the realism we are seeing here. So catch you in the next step. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, share and subscribe and um, see you in the next video. Peace.